The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Hello, Wolfpack! We're back! And today we take another trip into the classic horror series known as The Twilight Zone. Last time we did Generation 3 Twilight Zone. So now, you'll all be glad to hear that this week we're instead checking out Generation 2 Twilight Zone, the second reboot of the show which took place back in the 80s. Now, unlike Generation 1 Twilight Zone, which was considered the best series, and Generation 3 Twilight Zone, which was looked down upon as the worst, Generation 2 Twilight Zone fell somewhere in the middle. It was clearly not as good as the original, but it wasn't awful like how most people viewed the other reboot. In fact, some would say that this version was criminally underrated, because it does have a huge amount of fans who defend it. Now, I have never seen a lot of Generation 2 Twilight Zone, so I'm entering this with a whole new perspective. But I do think that it does deserve huge props for its horror content. The 80s Twilight Zone went less for moral lessons and more for straight-up terror to scar us all for life. And what better way to start off my first review on 80s Twilight Zone with none other than its supposedly scariest episode of the whole franchise. Yes, today's tale is considered the Twilight Zone at its most horrifying. What makes it so scary? Well, this story is about a shadow man. No, no, no. this shadow man is a boogeyman. Ugh, no, this is a different take on the Boogeyman. We're doing it Twilight Zone style. Everyone says that this was the scariest Twilight Zone episode ever, but does it still hold up that title by today? Well, let's stop wasting time and find out. Terrifying tale for us to beware the Boogeyman, or dated horror story that falls flat? Whether you like it or not, this is my review on the unsettling Twilight Zone story, The Shadow Man. So our episode opens up at an ordinary high school, where we listen to the most unintentionally hilarious 80s music ever. Wow, just wow. This is how the scariest episode of the franchise opens up, everyone, with wacky 80s sitcom music. I know this might seem nitpicky, but I just want to remind you all that this is supposed to be the opening to establish a scary story. I'm jumping ahead a little, but I need to warn you all now that this music completely contrasts with the tone we'll feel for in the rest of the episode. The whole story is actually pretty dark and nightmarish, which doesn't fit the musical background at all. The soundtrack is supposed to make the audience get a feel for what type of story they are in for, and while some people might use musical dissonance to fool the viewer, it can backfire horribly. This is like the Haunting Hour episode Scary Mary, a horror story featuring a ghost serial killer abducting little girls to cut off their faces, having that dumb pop song at the end of its credits. Stop inserting topical pop music into horror tales. It kills the mood instantly. I mean, could you imagine other epic stories using such inappropriate jingles in their openings? Wow. 
So, now that I'm done ranting on the bad music choices, let's get into the actual plot. We meet our main character, a cowardly loser nerd named Danny Hayes, who desires to become a cool kid to score with the ladies. But his dude bro Peter tells our protagonist that he'll never score with the ladies because he's too smart for his own good. Hey, good lessons for the kids, Twilight Zone. If you are too smart and successful, then you'll never have a girlfriend. Or boyfriend, depending on your gender. After all, every girl wants to get laid by the biggest idiots with no future. But Danny tells his pal otherwise, since he believes that he can achieve his well-deserved popularity. Then we cut to him walking home alone at night, where the narration gives us his backstory. When you're 13 years old, you're supposed to be beyond those childhood fears of things that go bump in the night. Supposed to be. But for Danny Hayes, those fears are about to rear up before him, from the shadows of the Twilight Zone. As he strolls down the road, we see the generic idiot bullies of the story getting ready to prank him because they have no lives. Of course there's generic idiot bullies in this. Did you expect the Twilight Zone to be original? Naturally, they scare Danny by dressing up as Professor Pig in Leatherface and chase him down the street with fake chainsaws hollering bloody murder. Um, is it wise to pull a serial killer prank in the public streets and not expect consequences for it at all? Seriously, you could get shot dead for that, even in the 80s. The idiot bullies reveal their trick and mock Danny for being a chicken who's afraid of everything, establishing our kid hero as a pushover with no spine. I know we're supposed to see Danny as the loser, but I just want to point out that the idiot bully spent their whole Friday night hanging out in the bushes going to extreme lengths to purchase all these Halloween props and setting up this complex jump scare plan just to prank the most easily scared kid in the entire school, who may or may not have planned on walking down this exact street. Seriously, you guys wasted a whole night for this stupid easy prank instead of, oh, I don't know, making out with your girlfriends or playing video games? Remind me again, who are the real losers in this show supposed to be? Later that night, Danny's nagging jerk mom chastises him for being afraid of the dark and still needing night lights on to sleep at dark because he's 13 years old and shouldn't believe in monsters anymore. It's ironic how they want to teach kids that there are no such things as monsters in the episode about how monsters are real and hiding in the shadows of your room. So the mom forces her son to sleep without a nightlight, and as our protagonist tries to slumber, he arrives. Oh my gosh, the monster is Mr. Enter! I guess once again the critic slipped down the slippery slope and continues his expedition of haunting children's nightmares. Okay, okay, it's not Mr. Enter, but rather the Shadow Man, a mysterious entity made up of living shadows and nightmares who acts as the boogeyman hiding from under the beds of unsuspecting little children. 
Now this creature is meant to be based off of the myth of shadow people who exist within the dark realms of our world, but the Twilight Zone leads more towards him being the Boogeyman. The Shadow Man is a pretty blatant stand-in for the Boogeyman who haunts children's nightmares. For those who don't know, the Boogeyman is a mythical entity who kills children who disobey their parents or act bad, mainly targeting them at night where nobody can see him. And that is precisely what kind of story the Twilight Zone goes for here, since he's always out and about after dark. He's clearly the Boogeyman, but they also make him look like that icon from those Stranger Danger signs just to make the audience understand that this is going to be a Stranger Danger tale. The demon soon introduces himself to Danny with his monster catchphrase. And then he just leaves. Wait, what? That's it? Hi, Danny. I'm the monster who lives under your bed. I like to kill people. But because I live under your bed, I won't kill you. Everyone else is fair game, though. Well, bye. He just comes up and then floats out the window. Oh, by the way, don't you just love the look on Danny's face when he finds out the boogeyman lives under his bed? Clearly, that's the face of a child scared out of his mind. The next morning, Danny tells his BFF Peter about the creep living under his bed, but his pal responds by telling him that it was all probably just a dream. Danny can't tell if what he saw was real or not until he overhears some kids at school talking about a weird serial killer who recently butchered some children around the neighborhood. They described the killer as a tall, mysterious, shadowy figure, covered in all black, and with a distorted face, which accurately fits the description of a certain somebody we all know. <coughs> That's right, everybody. The Shadow Man is meant to be a villainous, psychotic monster who loves partaking in... I have to say that I'm a little disappointed in this. I mean, we're introduced to this awesome boogeyman, and his whole motivation is to... just go around killing kids for no good reason at all. Why? Doesn't that kind of limit the potential of this epic monster when he has no real reason to go around killing people, other than he's just a boogeyman, and that's what they do, I guess? It's so lazy. Now, to be fair, this Twilight Zone tale is meant to be from the point of view of children, and to most kids, monsters being evil is something they just accept without delving further into it. To a kid, a monster kills people because that's just what they do for fun, or they possibly eat their victims. It's a simple way to view monsters since it's through the eyes of younglings, I can accept that the Shadow Man is just this unknown serial killer, but the reason I complain about this is because the writer gives no reason why the person who lives on top of the Boogeyman's bed is safe. The Shadow Man kills everyone around the world, except for the single person who lives on the bed the villain haunts. Why? This tidbit doesn't become more noticeable until much later in the story but it is a major problem that I have with the episode. Later that evening, Danny tries staying awake all night with a camera in hand to snap a picture of the Shadow Man to report him to the police. But after a few hours later, the Boogeyman eventually shows up once more. You already said that. I will never harm the person under whose bed I live. 
You already said that. Dude, you are not a Pokemon. You can say other stuff you know. I am a shadow man. Unless that's the only thing you can say? I am a shadow man. Oh my gosh, he's going to keep saying that every time he appears on screen, isn't he? What's your favorite color? I am a shadow man. Where do you come from? I am a shadow man. How did you come to exist? I am a shadow man. Uh, we're not going to gain any real background information on this guy, are we? This is the only line he gets, folks. The Shadow Man just keeps repeating this one quote all throughout the whole story. At first it seems cool, but it gets annoying real quickly. He tells us who he is and reminds Danny that he has immunity from all his killing sprees. Then he leaves to off some more innocent people for fun. Danny doesn't ask him any questions or share a single conversation with him for more than a brief second. And then, he just stands aside as the Shadow Man leaves. Yeah, it's scary a few times, but to me, it feels like a bit of a wasted opportunity to get a little backstory on our cool supernatural character. I mean, why does he kill people? Does he have a life? Or any hopes and dreams? Danny could get to know this guy haunting his bed. Maybe the Shadow Man isn't as pure evil as we all think he is. Anyways, Danny takes a picture of the monster and gives it to the police, who instantly form some wanted posters to catch the shadow. Oh yeah, because I'm so sure the police are going to solve the mystery of the living shadow, what are they gonna do when they actually corner him? Shoot the shadow in the face? I mean, just see how well that worked out for Curly Howard. The next day, everyone talks about the scary serial killer murdering all those people off-screen during the weekly nights, as the police have failed to somehow find this guy. Yeah, no joke, weeks have passed by, and the Shadow Man has offed hundreds of people already, and is becoming a dreaded public enemy that the entire city fears. Good stuff, Twilight Zone. We see Danny trying to tell his best friend Peter that the serial killer is really the Boogeyman and is in fact a monster living under his bed. But of course, he doesn't believe him. <laughs> Then, his best friend ditches Danny to deal with his night terrors on his own. Good friends you have there, Danny. They have no trust in you and abandon you in your time of need. Best friends! Meanwhile, Danny overhears his crush, Leanna, fighting with her boyfriend, Idiot Bully, learning that the Idiot Bully refuses to come over to Leanna's house to help her out with her algebra homework because he's too scared of being out alone at night with the big, scary serial killer on the loose, and he bails on her. Don't worry, though, random side character, because Danny makes his move to score with her, since he knows that he's safe at night due to the Shadow Man's strict honor code. They'll never hurt me, right? Promise? I will never harm the person under whose bed I live. 
Hey, thanks for the eighth reminder, creepy stranger. Have fun killing civilians tonight. Danny then goes to his crush's house to help her out with her homework and to score, where Leanna is impressed by his bravery and invites the nerd inside. But we also see the Shadow Man watching them from afar. He's just standing there, menacingly. And the next day, if you can believe it or not, Danny becomes a huge hit with the ladies, because they all ditch idiot bully to check out the sexy nerd. Yep, Danny uses his immunity from the Shadow Man's murder spree to his personal advantage, and naturally it all goes to his head. Which I'm sure won't lead to any ironic Twilight Zone consequences for later. Danny is finally popular, and all the chicks in the school dig him now because of how brave he is, since that's what the 40-year-old man writing this episode thinks all high school girls are like. Yeah, chicks dig him because he's literally the only guy in school who's brave enough to be out at night with a dangerous serial killer on the loose. Um, is that really such a big deal? You know, writers, there are night workers who do go outside to get to their jobs, even with creepy people prowling around at night. It's not that cool as everyone thinks. I mean, seriously, Danny is the only person in the entire town to walk out at night knowing there's a dangerous killer out there? Way to lose all the night shift workers in your audience, writer. Also, don't you just love how the Shadow Man, our big scary villain, goes from a disturbing boogeyman killer into a child's wingman? So as Danny hangs out with his harem, his dude bro Peter comes to him, asking our protagonist for help, after a few more deaths added to the Shadow Man's kill count, with one of the victims being his next door neighbor, making him fear that he'll be the next victim. Peter begs for Danny's protection, stating how he finally believes that the serial killer is the boogeyman sleeping under his bed. But Danny is evil now, and he completely blows off his idiot friend, and coldly dismisses helping him and all the innocent people the Shadow Man is killing. Because he's popular now, and he refuses to give up his 15 minutes of fame. Yep, our once scared hero is now an egotistical villain who's perfectly willing to let the Shadow Man kill anyone in his path just to secure his false awesomeness. Just like that, Danny doesn't care to stop the Shadow Man from... Peter justifiably calls the guy out on how horrible he is, but Danny responds by acting like a jerk. So Danny loses his only friend as a result. Oh no, not the guy who dismissed his boogeyman warnings, laughed at him for believing in monsters, and told him he was a loser who'd never get a girlfriend. Not exactly a big loss there. But the idiot bully comes in, jealous of Danny's coolness, and he challenges our villain protagonist to a fight, where Danny convinces idiot bully to duel him at night in the city park which is pointed out to be an area that the serial killer frequently visits, making it loud and clear that Danny is going to use the Shadow Man to kill off the bully. Wait, wait, wait. So, the entire town knows for a fact that the creepy serial killer who has been haunting their town for weeks has a noteworthy crime scene he often goes to. And yet, the police are still unable to capture or even see him. 
Good lord, everyone in town knows that the killer constantly kills people in a distinct place of interest, and he still somehow eludes the police spotting him for weeks? What the heck are the cops even doing right now? <laughs> no, you can't leave the force. I can change. I just think there's more money in private security. What I'm hearing is, I'm too fat. <laughs> <laughs> So the idiot bully agrees to confront Danny in the park at night to brawl, only to avoid public arrest, and Danny confidently believes that things will turn out in his favor. Oh boy, I sure hope there won't be a dark twist ending giving him his karma. So Danny smugly combs his hair, where the Shadow Man shows up again, where he says, say it together now, I am the Shadow Man, and I will never harm the person under whose bed I live. Way to keep us on our toes, Twilight Zone. Oh, but Danny then acts like a jerk and orders the Shadow Man around, making it painfully obvious that something bad is going to happen to him later. Seriously, the kid bosses around the shadow demon who kills people like his pet. That just signed his death certificate. I am the shadow man. And I will never harm the person under whose bed I live. Glad to hear, my man. Hey, don't stay out too late. And when you get back, make sure you shut the window. Little brat. So we cut to that night at the park, where Idiot Bully shows up late to finally fight with the protagonist. Noticeably without a single squad car in sight, patrolling the place the killer shows up at the most. But hey, serial killers are just small potatoes in the police business, I guess. We get some slow build-up, where they try to make it seem like the Shadow Man isn't going to show up, before the Shadow Man shows up and scares off Idiot Bully, who runs for it like the wuss that he is. Danny begins smugly bragging about how cool they are, but the Shadow Man pulls out a betrayal and turns on the kid, where we get to our twist ending. That was funny, Cat, but why don't you show us all how it really ended? That is how it really ends. No joke, the episode ends with the revelation that there are multiple shadow men across the world living under everyone's beds, and one of them captures and violently strangles our main character to death. This is how the story ends, everyone. Danny Hayes goes from a cowardly loser to an egotistical sociopathic jerk who ends up suffering an ironic death at the hands of another Shadow Man who informs him that there's a whole secret society of monsters living under everyone's bed. You all have Shadow Men under your beds who come out at night to kill people. I have a shadow man, you have a shadow man, your neighbor has a shadow man. What is this, a shadow man convention? Now, people who love this episode have actually given this dark twist ending multiple theories on what's going on here. Most people believe that the twist is supposed to imply that there is an army of shadow men living under all our beds who come out at night to kill people. However, some fans believe that this guy is in fact the exact same Shadow Man who was living under Danny's bed, and this kill is his way of saying, 
Hey, bro, this is my way of letting you know I moved out. LOL. Some fans believe that the Shadow Man is still in fact one guy, but he grew disgusted with the way his former host was behaving. So he murders him as a way of punishing the boy for his booming ego. But I kind of doubt that, since this guy murders people for fun and without reason. Moral high ground? The guy who kills kids for fun has morals and grew to hate his own host for growing a massive ego? That feels a bit like a stretch even for me. Others also want to suggest that this Shadow Man is in fact an ally to the main Shadow Man we've been following, but was told by his friend how Danny was acting up and he wanted another monster to punish him as a favor. Sort of like putting a hit on somebody who's untouchable to him. Or, some fans thought that the Shadow Man attacked him because Danny is metaphorically not the same person who he once knew when he moved under his bed, and he killed Danny for his change in his personality, as he no longer feared the Boogeyman by growing more comfortable with his presence. Or, Danny Shadow Man was never even the killer to begin with, and it's possible that somebody else's Shadow Man has been committing all the murders the whole time, and this is revealed to be that one evil Shadow Man. My point is, there are a ton of theories about this twist, interpreting the villain, and this grim twist ending. But one thing that I do know for certain is that our main character, Danny, is very, very, very dead. Oh, by the way, this brings me back to my complaint about the unfitting music at the beginning. This happy-go-lucky music misleads us by opening up with a happy opening, only to close out on a serial killer story with a little boy getting strangled to death. What, you don't want to bookends this brutality with your 80s jam Twilight Zone? Well, we'll fix that. And that was the end to the 80s Twilight Zone scariest episode, The Shadow Man. How does it hold up? Well, to be honest, it was pretty alright. Just alright, but with many flaws here and there. Let's get the negatives out of the way first. As I said before, the soundtrack is way off base. The music simply does not fit the mood the story is going for. Now, occasionally, we do get pretty haunting tunes whenever the Shadow Man appears, but when the happy 80s jam is spliced in between the nightmare fuel, it nearly goes against the feeling of fear and dread we're supposed to have all throughout the story. Secondly, I do not approve of how the show just treats bullying as a minor nuisance. Seriously, our main character gets a dark ego over time and gets killed for it, but the bully who stalked, harassed, and threatened to assault our loser protagonist just gets a minor slap on the wrist and his punishment is getting scared off? There's something not quite right about that. Now, some fans defend this by arguing that the only reason Idiot Bully doesn't rightfully die is because the Shadow Man who killed Danny was the Bully Shadow Man from under his bed. That kind of makes sense, but it's still irritating how the show does not play the bullying seriously at all. This might sound nitpicky, but the 80s Twilight Zone has a few infamous moments where the dated social commentary proved to be a major negative trait for this series. Sorry to say, but it's dated and disgusting. The more I get into the older shows, the more we're probably going to experience some values dissonance like this. So be prepared for some incredibly dated viewpoints, everyone. The show treats bullying like a small problem, but the truth is that it's not. 
I understand that the show wants to show that Danny himself is becoming a horrible person as well, to the point where he's using the shadow demon to kill off people he dislikes, and is totally ignoring the fact that the boogeyman is killing innocent people too. So it is fair to say that Danny does deserve this death, but I think it could have been more powerful if Danny was abusing his power and trying to kill somebody who didn't deserve to die. Newsflash Twilight Zone, today in horror stories, nobody cares if an idiot bully dies, but rather likable or clueless people who we don't want to see die. Danny was growing into a terrible person, but most of us don't like the idiot bully getting away with only a small scare scarring him for life. Though the dumb jock did say that he was on the swim team, so I guess we'll have to rely on another monster taking care of him. Most of the other characters are just supporting cast members. Their one note exists solely to push the story forward and don't get to be as memorable as the protagonist or the villain. Danny has a straightforward character arc. He goes from a pathetic loser, afraid of everything, into a smug, sociopathic, egotistical jerk who uses a murderer to rise to the top. But when he goes too far, he gets his just desserts and dies from an ironic twist. Typical Twilight Zone stuff. And finally, that leaves us with the Shadow Man. Despite how cool and intimidating he is, there are a few problems I have with him. The big one being that his unknown characteristics confuse me at times. I can accept that he's just some horrifying supernatural boogeyman who came from out of nowhere and just kills people because he finds it fun, but what I do want to know is why he provides death immunity to the one person who owns the bed he lives underneath. Why keep one person alive if you intend to kill everyone else around the area? Is it some code of honor? Does the Shadow Man just feed off of their nightmares to stay alive? Does he plan to pin all the murders on this little boy? What? There needs to be at least a single line of dialogue giving the villain a reason why the main character gains plot armor. Now, to be fair, the fans theorize that Danny Shadow Man might not be the killer, in spite of all evidence that says otherwise but it's still left way too blurry for those invested in the story. I stand by the theory that the twist is saying there's many shadow men on the loose killing people, since that feels more on par with the Twilight Zone than anything else. But despite my nitpicks, I do see this villain as a very cool monster. I only complain because I want to know more about him. They rely on the fear power of this monster, but lack the chance to give him any personality. In my opinion, he's not as memorable as an R.L. Stein villain or an Are You Afraid of the Dark monster, since the show overuses the fear of the unknown to make him stand out. It's not a bad idea at all, but it just needs a little more. Nevertheless, the Shadow Man is not the central focus of the story. Danny is. It's Danny's story, about how he discovers the Shadow Man and uses it for his own selfish gain. It's Danny's story, about his journey from a nobody to a villain. The Shadow Man may be the more interesting character, but in the end, he's not the protagonist. So I can't fault it too much for that. The Shadow Man's mysterious nature is that he's supposed to be what children fear the most. He's a boogeyman lurking within the darkness of our world, spreading terror upon the minds of children in a Freddy Krueger-esque fashion. It's simple, but considering that it tries to appeal to a child's sense of fear for the unknown monsters in the dark, it seems likely that his lack of character was intentional. Human beings fear what they do not understand, and the episode really plays up that idea for all it's worth. So overall, The Shadow Man is a decent story that does act as a nice horror tale, 
but my only problem is that it doesn't say that much of a strong message as a Twilight Zone story usually does. It's just a simple horror story to scare the audience. But I think we've all seen horror stories like this before, but done much, much better. So I'm giving this episode a gold skull, but just barely. The horror elements are definitely present, but any chance of being a deeper story or even a fun little Halloween adventure are just wasted to give us a run-of-the-mill things that go bump in the night tale. There is, truthfully, a lot to enjoy in this episode if you're only seeking a cool yet basic monster story. I personally think that The Twilight Zone could do better, but it's fine for the most part. The story is interesting enough, the nightmare fuel is decent, the characters are simple, it's easy to follow, the main antagonist is awesome enough to gain a legion of loyal fans, and the twist ending is pretty creepy. The Shadow Man is not that scary to me compared to the other horror stories I've enjoyed over the years, but if you like it, then that's fine. It does have a ton of highlights and a cool villain. The Shadow Man is a simple horror story that makes us fear what hides within the dark. But I'm still pissed off that we don't get more on the Shadow Man character. This is a cool villain, but we still don't know a whole lot about him. We don't even get to see if he has a face. I want to know. Well then, good news, Cat. I managed to get a clear photo of the Shadow Man. Wanna see? Oh boy, you bet I do. Nice. Time to see who the Shadow Man really is. <gasps> no. No. It can't be. It just can't be.